Hi, and um, to this week we're talking to Dr. Helen Marshall, who's a senior lecturer in creative writing in the School of Communication and Arts. And Helen is going to talk to us a little today about creative approaches to scholarly research, because Helen does both uh, creative research through her novels and short stories and scholarly research. So Helen, welcome. Thank you very much. <laughs> I guess the first question would be, um, uh, what is your favourite creative approach to research? One of the approaches that I found that I've drawn on from my creative writing and been able to bring back to my scholarly research is thinking about hunches, I suppose, in the way that I follow my instincts. Um, so I think that sometimes within academia, the idea of a hunch could get a bit of a bad rap. Uh, but as, as a creative writer, we use hunches all the time. And I think that hunches can be really useful for doing a couple of specific things. I think that they're good because they build on pattern recognition. And as a creative practitioner, one of the things that we do is we train ourselves to be able to recognize patterns usefully. And as a scholarly researcher, we're doing the same process. We get better at being able to recognize patterns as a way of essentially taking shortcuts. I think hunches can also be really useful for open-ended questions. And so in creative writing, obviously, if you're sitting down to write a novel, you could write about literally anything in the world and literally anything that is not in the world yet. So the, the field is so wide open, you need somewhere to get started. Um, but if you're doing other kinds of scholarly research, so I began my career as a medievalist and I found hunches were really useful for archival research in particular, because when you're going into the archives, you don't always know what you're going to find. You have to write a grant application saying you have some sense of what you're going to find, um, but you're often piecing this together on uh, shoddy or limited information. So there's a little bit of guesswork involved, and I think trusting hunches helps you feel a little bit more comfortable with that. Um, and I think hunches can also be really useful, particularly for iterative project design. So hunches go wrong all the time. And so what they're good for is getting you started on something and then being able to iterate afterwards. So just on that, I mean, playing the devil's advocate, um, what does happen? I mean, what do you do next if a hunch goes terribly, terribly wrong? Do you give up on hunching altogether, if that's a verb? <laughs> um, I, I think that I tend to uh, approach things with um, what Duncan Green uh, in a book I read called How Change Happens calls a um, aim or a fire ready aim approach, which means sometimes you have to fire before you aim and you know exactly what you're doing. You sort of have to jump into it and that's what generates the initial information that allows you to make further decisions. Um, but for me, if a, if a hunch doesn't pan out, I mean, the first step is to kind of sit back and re-examine the assumptions that I had. So what made me think that that was going to be the right kind of thing? Is there something that I missed? Um, and sometimes then I push back in a different direction. I either have to decide to commit to that hunch and explore it further or say, all right, maybe I just need to take a new approach. But either way, I've got the research project moving forward and I've learned something through that process, even if it's ended up in an initial round of failure. So I'll just ask one last question, seeing as how we have a real life creative writer on the line. And obviously research involves a lot of writing, um, especially in the Haas disciplines. Do you have like a top tip or, you know, some advice to offer uh, people who only do scholarly writing about what they could borrow or learn from creative writing? Yeah, absolutely. I think creative writing is all about process. And that's a really key thing to keep in mind is that once you've got something down on paper, it's easier to work with it. So as creative writers, you know, we tend to set things like word goals on a daily basis so that even when we don't feel ready to write, we start writing. And then the process of writing helps us generate insights and move forward because you can always go back and edit and you can go back and reflect on what you've done. But just getting something down, I think particularly right now during this phase of uncertainty with COVID-19, that it's easy to feel like you don't have enough information to move forward and that sometimes you just have to make that leap even if you don't feel fully ready. Uh, so that's more of that fire ready aim, is it? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> oh, that's great. Thank you so much, Helen. I'm going to turn the recording off now, but stay on the line. Um, thanks very much for your time. Thank you.